Hi there. Um, we're back in the garden again, and this is probably just going to be a short video. There's not much to show you at this precise moment in time, but I'm going to get busy planting away today. So I've already started this morning on my Brussels. So you need to wait until Brussels have got about eight leaves before planting them out. And most of mine did. Maybe I could have waited another week, but I haven't got the time next weekend and I don't want them to be stuck in the conservatory until then. So I'm taking a risk. I've kept some back, just a handful, just in case any of these fail, but I'm hoping that they're gonna do well. So, okay, let's show you where they are in the garden. So, this is the apple tree and it gives me a lot of shade on this back end. Now, I understand that Brussels like some shade to grow in. So, seeing as I've got this back bed here, which has got lots of shade through it. I mean, it does get dappled light and it does get some sun, um, but probably in the height of the summer, either end, it, it's, it gets a little bit shady down here. And so, it was very simple, very simple transplant. They were in little cups, little, um, pots so it was just dig a hole in the earth water that hole like you would any time you are um, putting transplanting any plants uh, place the place the brussel into the hole and cover it up it they were they were a little bit leggy so you want to you want to sink them down so it's just their leaves on the top so all of the stalk the leggy stalk is underground cover it up and give it a little water to settle it in so there we go i've got two varieties here uh, along this side we have got what have we got we've got bro brody Brody, it's an F1. Anyway, it's a hybrid. And on this side, we have got Rubine. So the Rubine seem to have, I don't know if you can see, this one I didn't plant deep enough, a red tinge to their, to their stalks. So I'll look it up later. Maybe that was a red Brussels sprout that I bought. I do like to try and do the red Brussels sprouts, especially for Brian, who isn't really a fan of green vegetables. Uh, so there we go. I've got five in here. I've spaced them one, two, three hands apart. Um, sorry, that's really scientific, isn't it? <laughs> My way of measuring. Um, okay, so they went in this morning and then let's give you a little bit of a tour, shall we? So underneath this cage that I've got going spare at the moment, it's just not in use, it will be in use later on. I have transplanted my strawberries. I thought that that might be a nice safe place for them because I have not been able to. The chickens are so noisy this morning. Can you hear them? So I've not been able to harvest any strawberries off of my strawberry plants in the last years. Um, and they're very tiny and they have been living underneath the apple tree. So they've probably been struggling with getting nutrients from there or something or other. I'm not quite sure, but I thought I'd be kind to them and I would transplant them. So they're basically the same size as they have been for, two, for about two years now. Um, and I thought they had died, to be honest, but I found them when I was, when I was putting the, when I was clearing this area and putting my little pond in, there's my little pond. I don't know if you can see that. So it's just, it's an extra deep drip tray. I just would like to encourage the odd frog to take care of the odd slug. Anyway, so I've transplanted my strawberries under here seeing as i'm not using this right now and hopefully that might mean i'll have some strawberries this year and then the leeks have been in for a while now 
And this is some of my peas along here that I planted this morning. Let's have a look over in the boats. In the boats, we've got um, some onions coming up. This is all white onions in this boat here. And then there's onions coming up in the other boat as well. This boat, for some reason, was a bit quicker. So I guess it must be something to do with the variety of onions I've got. Still underneath the planks, still no sign of any carrots. They always take so long. But my little, look, doesn't it get so exciting when you see the little babies coming through? Am I, am I? Tiny weeny 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 weeny. Little beetroot and turnip along here. So, for some reason, these ones here, there doesn't seem to be any sign of any of the ones along here. I think these were beetroot though, and I think these are turnip along here, which are coming up nicely, wonderfully. Slow down a little bit. Oh no, 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 there they are. And then they slow down along, along here. So, this must be another variety along here. So, I did try to split it to three different varieties along here. But it's always exciting when you see the little babies popping their heads up. Um, right, what else have we got? Well, these are onions that were in from last year. So they will be um, the first onions that I'll be cropping this year. Red onions are planted down on around the edge of this bed here, haven't started coming up yet. But the white onions on this side, definitely showing their little heads, which is lovely. More peas planted along on this side. The radish are being very, very slow this year. I think it's probably because we had a little bit of um, a needing to transplant issue because we were building the new beds and they were in beds that were in the way. Right over here, we have more radish that are, oh look, they're little babies still. That's gonna taste nice. Um, so these again were transplanted and they're a bit cramped. Normally I would start my, wow, sun's bright today. Um, I would start my radishes off and I would make the ho individual holes for each of the radish to go into and they would have plenty of space and they would be in some nice light soil and they'd break up the soil for the beginning of the um, of the planting season as well and they'd provide cover crop for the earth and make sure that I didn't get any weeds which would be wonderful um, this year because we've been building the beds Everything just got a bit messed up, to be honest. It'll look good by the time we get into midsummer. Um, I couldn't resist not planting my radish because I just love that first taste of the year. Now I know this is just a baby and you really, really <laughs> normally eat them when they're this small, but they do need to be thinned out, don't they? And if you're gonna thin them out, you might as well eat them. Radish, the first taste of spring. Oh, in my garden anyway. I just love it. And the chickens love the greens. So I will send these over to them now. So just to finish off the tour, along with the radish, I transplanted the onions because I would like onions running all the way around my beds to help keep the pests away. And then along the front of this bed, we've got little brand new onions popping their heads up along here. No sign again of carrots at the back. I've transplanted, I wondered how they do, and they seem to be doing okay. Transplanted the asparagus this year. So it's now got a proper bed to be in. I know there's not many of them and I will probably grow an awful lot more but they've been stuck in a tub 
for a long time and now they're in their own bed and over here I transplanted the fennel which also and this is where I get my fennel seeds from it's like my main fennel plant um, and that had also been stuck in a tub and now it's got its own bed and I think that's pretty much all I can really show you now so there you go Brussels and peas in this morning and now I'm off to build another bed. Take care. Happy planting.